Hey, welcome back. In this video, we're going to focus on obtaining some data sets for these sentiment indicators that we discussed in the first video of this series. We briefly discussed the fear and greed index and how it's composed of multiple sentiment indicators, including uh, junk bond demand, put call ratio, stock price strength, momentum, volatility, and stock price breadth, and safe haven demand. And so we should be able to obtain some of these data sets ourselves, as well as combine it with some other data sets that we may find in order to come up with some kind of measure of fear and greed that we can use and see if we can uh, derive some insight out of these indicators and use them to possibly make some contrarian uh, moves in the market. And just after I made the last video, a few more people bought me a drink, so I appreciate that. So I want to highlight each of these people and thank them uh, personally every time this happens. So I want to thank Kirti Kumar, who bought me a drink and said uh, these videos helped him get back interested in Python after 10 years. So that's always good to hear that someone's picking up programming again and that these videos helped uh, motivate them to get that going again. And also Francisco Morales here uh, said great videos, very useful info. So it's always good to hear that other people are getting value you out of these videos. And I'll leave this link down below. Feel free to contribute if you desire. Otherwise, like and subscribe and continue to watch because I got a lot of great content coming out in the upcoming weeks. So back to the data sets. So the first data set we'll focus on is the put call ratio. And the reason for that is on our message board, hackingthemarkets.com. Uh, someone's already asked about this and I didn't uh, give a full example of how to do this, but uh, WChant says, I'm looking to get the following information about the US stocks uh, via API, put call ratio, volume, put call ratio, open interest, IV, price analyst, average, and short fee. Um, yeah, and so let's see how to get that. So the put call ratio is part of this fear and greed indicator, and there's a chart of how it has changed this ratio over time. And you can notice, obviously, there's some spikes here for when the put to call ratio is higher, so above one. So you see in the middle of March of 2020 here, the put to call ratio is above one, meaning more puts are being purchased than calls. Typically, more calls are being bought than puts because the market has generally trended up over hundreds of years now. So if there's a period when people are buying tons of puts, that means there's a lot of fear and people are expecting large declines. But generally at the point when people start buying tons of puts like this, that is often an indicator of a bottom and an indicator that fear is at its maximum. And on the other hand, if you look at cases like the very beginning of September, which we just had a couple of weeks ago, you can see the put to call ratio got uh, below 0.5, I think at least. You see that's uh, the lowest of the year there, closer to 0.4. That means tons of call options are being bought, lots of speculation. And so there might be uh, 400 puts being bought and then 1,000 calls being bought. And so the ratio of puts to calls is 0.4 there. And you can see right after that uh, low there, that's actually when a reversal happened. That's when that corresponds to exactly when the S&P 500 was at about uh, 3580. And then there was an immediate sell off after that. So that was like when we kind of started started going parabolic there. So that was a sign of greed. And so where can we actually get this data set to see if we can use it? So this is uh, published by the CBOE. And so if you look uh, Google for CBOE uh, put call ratio, you'll see that um, they have this put to call ratio page right here. And if I scroll down, let's see what we got. We got the total exchange volume and put call ratio. Uh, we have the index of volume and put call ratio. So puts and calls on the indexes and then CBOE equity volume. So the equity put call ratio, and I'm gonna use the uh, CBOE equity volume and put call ratio. And it looks like uh, that gave me a download. So this is actually a historical data set that they provide uh, right here. And just like that, with this download, this gets me a lot of the data I need. If you look here on the left column, uh, it starts in November of 2006. So it gets you the put call ratio starting in 2006. And if I scroll down to the bottom, you can see where it ends. So it looks like it gets us through October of 2019, which isn't all the data. It looks like for some reason, they don't give you the last year of data in this CSV. And so we'll see about how to obtain that ourselves. And we'll wanna get this date in a format that we use. So I like to use uh, the leading zeros is good there, but usually we use year, month, day. That way it's sortable. And uh, a lot of our other, uh, our back trader tests and also the date format that we store in a relational database often uses year dash month dash date. And so we're gonna get this in that format. And then if you scroll over to the other side here, uh, you can see uh, the number of calls and puts. 
and the total, and then the put call ratio on the right side here. And so if we find uh, any values that are above one here, maybe that'll show us a period when there was some fear. So let's see, uh, 1.06 right there was a period of fear, and that looks like looks like that was, I didn't even look at this beforehand, that was October 9th, 2008. So you can see that was a period of a huge amount of fear, and if you were to go back on the chart, that's during some of the depths of the Great Recession. Although that wasn't the final low, that would have been, in hindsight, that's a very good time to have been buying stocks October, November of 2008 during that peak of fear, but you would have had to stomach uh, some lower lows in March of 2009. Um, and if you go even further, I bet if you look on March of 2009, let's see what it was. I believe March 9th, 2009 or March 6th uh, was around the date. Um, and you see uh, it was actually 0.9 there so 0.9 on march 5th 2009 and so yeah put call ratio is uh, pretty elevated uh, during that period of time um, so that's um the period from 2006 through a year ago how do you get the other data so if you want to get uh, today's um, data you can probably find that very easily so i'm going to click back on data and go to market statistics and current market statistics you can click on that and this will actually populate um, hour by or every 30 minutes here. And so when the market's open, I want to write a script that scrapes this and maintains our data set and uh, keeps an up-to-date uh, snapshot of the current put call ratio. So if you looked at the, this when the market is open um, uh, tomorrow, so Monday, uh, September, what is it, uh, 21st, uh, this will start getting populated again. So this will be, uh, the current day will will be stored here and you'll get some data every 30 minutes here uh, if you want to snapshot that data. And then to get the data for the last year, what I just did is I signed up, there's a site ycharts.com and they give you like a five day trial here and I just gave it my email and then signed up and it looks like they, if you look for a CBOE, put call ratio, Y charts, and there may be some other people serving this up, but you can get this for free uh, briefly because I'm just going to download this now. And so what I did was find this page and I just, uh, I think if you click export, they try to get you to sign up for an account. But really, if all you need is uh, the last year, since we already have through 2019, right? You just type that, you get data. And I literally just copied this to a, a file. So um, I just got this. And then we can combine this with our CSV. And then if I do a new file here, um, you can just copy copy these down and just do some quick find and replaces um, in your editor here and then massage this data. And I've already done this and I'm gonna put this on the GitHub page and so that you can download a copy of this put call ratio. The next piece of data that we can download from CBOE is we can get the VIX historical data. And I can also download that. Uh, from, and so if you look at VIX index historical data, they actually just have a CSV file here and you can download that. You can either get an old calculation from 1990 through 2003 or get the present data from 2004 to the present. So I click that, download, and this gives me a data set going back to 2004. Um, and if you scroll down in here, you'll see that gets me the VIX data through uh, September 18th, 2020. And then we get the VIX open, high, low, and close of the day. And so if you look here, we got VIX open, high, low, and close. And so we can take just that VIX close and the equity put call ratio for any given day. And we already have those two data points. Those are two indicators that make up the fear and greed. And we can snapshot those and use them in our data set. The next piece of data I wanted to talk about was the AAII sentiment. So you can download that as well. If I type AAII sentiment, you get the sentiment survey, the current one and the past results. So I click the current sentiment survey and you can see how people are feeling right now. So uh, basically since 1987, AAII members, so AAII is the American Association of Individual Investors. And I think these are just your average uh, retail investors that are part of this uh, organization here. And then they've asked them for the last 30 some odd years, um, what, how do they feel about the market? Are you bullish? Are you neutral? Are you bearish? And you can see how they feel about the market at any given time. And some percentage is bullish and some percent is bearish. And they've recorded this data over the course of many years. And then if you search, right, you get uh, that data for the, uh, the current data, but there's also the survey past results here that uh, is stored right here. And so you can get the surveys uh, past results here in September 
and then you can click here at the bottom and they give you an XLS file of this past uh, sentiment data. And so let's open that up real quick and see times that they're very uh, bullish and bearish. And so you see, we get a reported date going back to 1987, percent bullish, percent bearish. Um, they give you like a moving average of it and as well as what the S&P 500 was, right? And so a lot of people think that if this particular group was excessively bearish, then it's a good time to actually get long. So this, some people use this as a contrarian indicator. So column D here is uh, the percent bearish. And if I scroll all the way down through uh, 2020, let's look at the bottom in uh, March of 2020. Were they bullish because the S&P was low or were they bearish? March 12th, March 19th, March 26th. They asked them, I think every Thursday. And if you look, when were they most bearish? 50, over 50% 50 were bearish at the exact bottom. And you notice the times before that, you know, they were, they were plenty uh, bullish. So if you look back uh, on February 20th, of 2020, the absolute top of the market um, looks like about 25% of them were bearish, right? So, and then they were over 40% uh, bullish. So they were the most bullish at the top of the market and they were the most bearish at uh, the bottom of the market here in March. And they were also uh, bearish again uh, in April, which were turned out to be uh, pretty good times to buy. So maybe we could use this as a possible uh, contrarian indicator. So we can also take uh, this date format here, which has dashes in it, but has the years, you know, it's missing a couple digits. So we can take this data set as well, get it all in a common date format, common open, high, low, close format for S&P or whatever index we want to analyze and run our back tests uh, through that. And the last data set I want to talk about in this video, at least, is the fear and greed index itself in aggregate. And so this number 52 here looks like it's embedded in an image. So uh, they actually don't provide a data set of this, but people have applied a number of techniques to get this. Some people have uh, pulled this number out of this image. I've also found that you can use a screen scraping library like Beautiful Soup in Python to scrape the screen and get these numbers here. And then I've also seen, and what's, what's the most interesting approach I saw was uh, someone actually tried to run a back test here in Quantopian, and they were able to use this web plot digitizer to uh, get a picture. So it's able to get a picture of a chart like this, fear and greed over time. And even though they don't publish the actual numbers, uh, you can like, digitize these numbers. So I can say, oh, this point on the graph is 97, this point is seven, and then this point is October, 5th, 2018 or whatever, you give it a few data points and it's able to inter interpret this line and fill in the details pretty accurately. And someone was able to obtain a data set that way. And so I found a pretty large data set containing this fear and greed index number um, in this GitHub repository. So I searched for fear, greed in GitHub and I found uh, this person has a CSV here, uh, fear, greed, historic. And it looks like they recorded from 2011. And so they just have the raw number in here. And the date is yet in another format with year, month, day with no dashes or slashes. And so we're going to combine that together. And this went all the way through uh, January of 2020. And then they stopped. So I didn't know what happened the last eight months. I didn't have that data set. And so to try to fill in this data set for completeness, I tried a couple of approaches. The first thing I did is I took this URL, moneycnn.com, fear and greed. And I went to archive.org, which is a site that's dedicated to taking snapshots or archived uh, images of web pages. So you can type into this Wayback Machine, give it a URL, and I'll show what a web page looked like at a particular point in time. So you can see there's snapshots of this web page on particular dates. And so if I wanted to figure out what happened um, in May or March and what it looked like, you see there's some snapshots and I can click on one of these snapshots and it'll load a copy of what that web webpage looked like on that particular date. And so when I click on the archive.org snapshot for March, I get this page that was the snapshot of what the page looked like on March 17th at 5.18 p.m. You can see this is the period when extreme fear was registered. So it was on five, uh, three, six was the previous close in the previous week. And you can see where the VIX is spiking up, ridiculous. This is on extreme fear. Put call is on extreme fear because it's above one. Um, you see the breadth, safe haven demand, junk bond demand, uh, market momentum, and then stock price strength. And so you can see what uh, this indicator was on that particular date. And so uh, one way to do this is to uh, scrape um, all of these snapshots. But the other way I found that actually worked 
um, was this, I found a bot or a user that was tweeting the fear greed index. And when I searched for their name, um, you see where they, they were tweeting the uh, fear and greed index uh, every day for whatever reason they were they were tweeting the fear and greed index all the time. And I was actually able to copy this list from a series of tweets. So I used a tweet tweetpy to like download their tweets and then copy and fill in this data. And so now I have this uh, nice data set of the fear and greed index, AAII sentiment survey, VIX, and CBOE uh, put call ratio all in a nice data set. And I'll show you what the raw data looks like real quick and also how you could parse this and make a clean data set that you can use inside of your backtest or relational database. So I know that was a lot of explanation, but the point of all this is, is that you can find lots of data sets all over the web and you can parse that data. Some of the data may be in CSV format. Some of it might be in some API. Some you might need to uh, scrape Twitter or scrape a web page. You might need to uh, scrape an old web archive or the data could even be embedded in an image. But it's kind of interesting to be able to find more and more creative sources of data because a lot of people are using the exact same data. Like if you just get any old trading view indicator. A lot of people are using that stuff, but if you can uh, be creative and maybe find some data and put it together in a unique way and package it into your own unique indicator, maybe uh, you can find some type of edge that way. So I know I said I was going to start coding in this video. It turns out it took me a while to get all the data, download it, and explain that. So uh, I'm going to stop this video here. This video was just about uh, obtaining some data sets. The next video, I'll start uh, writing some code to parse that raw data and start preparing it for uh, backtesting like I discussed earlier. So stay tuned for the next video. And if you didn't want all the explanation, you can start on part three.